population 3000 is a typical Lancashire village, which is why it's been chosen for a unique experiment in television viewing trends. Television sets here have been wired up to receive 30 channels by cable and satellite. That includes the French porno channel, but they're all proving a huge turn-off because people here are mad as hell and they're not going to take it anymore, so they're watching their own home service. Good, hasn't it? It's been hard work, you know, taking up a lot of time and everything, but well, from my point of view, I've really enjoyed doing it. Do you get nervous, Jonathan? Initially, when we started, I used to get very nervous the first few programmes, um, but I found that if you went back and watched the, watched the programme through on the video, Mum always videoed it, of course, so we can go yeah. back and have a look, and if we went back to see, see the programme, any mistakes we've made really weren't very important. Debbie, how do you think the show went tonight? From my own personal point of view, I think um, it was hectic, really hectic. We've never had a night like tonight. There were yourselves filming Channel 4, ABC News, our own two... Villages. Television certainly has put this quiet village in the harsh glare of the media spotlight. Satellite dishes sprouting from every house have become part of the local flora. We have over the top all the dishes, the uh, satellite dishes, and they are gathering the signal in from the satellites, which are 22,000 miles above the Earth and then the signals are being processed here as you can see on the monitors here we have all the signals and then we're sending it out to the viewers in their homes and you're monitoring what they're watching aren't you yes indeed we have this is the object of the exercise mm -hmm. we have here two computers where we can actually tell who is watching what and for how long really what we want to know is what people want to watch for the future Action. What the villagers want to see is local, not global. This is the good and the bad, a mini soap devised, written, starred in and filmed by the local children. The Bobby is the only outsider. He's Mike Short, the television executive who dreamed up the experiment in the first place. I'm starving. Got out to it at your house. Oh, great. Three robbers have just been caught. Now all you can think about is food. Well, I'm hungry. Come on. Let's go to the post office. <laughs> exactly how much help are they getting to put it on air? The villagers um, set the agenda, as it were. They decide what's going to be uh, on the show. They put up suggestions. They research some of the stories. But in fairness, um, they can't do it all because they have jobs, they have families. And they've been given support by students from Salford College of Technology and um, journalist students from Lancashire Polytechnic who give them technical and journalistic backup. Uh, that said, they've um, shown remarkable skill in taking to the cameras. In fact, one or two of them who've got home video cameras of their own have shot plenty of the material. One of the studio cameras is operated by a local lad, Mark Edmondson. Um, the genesis here is here of a television station. If they had the facilities, they could probably make their own. Are those seats vacant for a reason? Well, it's come down to airtime here at the Village Hall and tension is mounting. The presenters are going through last-minute script changes, the director is giving instructions and the audience is settling into the seats. It promises to be a lively show. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. Run VT. Good luck, everybody. Thank you very much. Please, I can't hear it. Good evening and welcome once again to WVTV. Tonight, the first item, a live debate on who should control local television, was controversial stuff for the good citizens of Waddington. It even stopped a snooker match in the local. But television doesn't always run like a smoothly oiled machine. While I sat unaware in the audience, pandemonium was reigning in the gallery. Right, Debbie, yeah. we've got a wee problem with this VT, so I might want to go into the next item. So, can we have this set up for the interview, please? Fiona! Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much.
Well, Waddington certainly has rejected the global in favour of the local. It's curious that it takes television to bring a community closer together, as though it's an electronic substitute for chatting across the garden fence. And it'll be interesting to see if the community spirit survives when the people of Waddington are no longer under the glare of the television lights. They're a great lot. A few of them came over to interview us and they're really nice. I think you're all brilliant if you're watching. There are six half-hour programmes on the TV Village due to go out on Channel 4, which uh, is starting on Tuesday. That's May the 15th, next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. And I should think the pubs will certainly be empty in Waddington on Tuesday nights from now on. We're going to take a break now, but uh, in a couple of... Take a small picturesque village in Lancashire and give them 30 television channels. For five weeks, the people of Waddington were subjected to the television of the future, including their very own channel. Hello, I'm Deborah Winkley, and this is Waddington Village Television. They were about to discover oh, that one. making television was not the same as watching it. Can I ring my mom? In parts of the village, viewing required loyalty and imagination. Waddington is the television village, Tuesday at 8 on Channel 4. What a cocko. Gavin Waitman presents Brave New Wilderness. Good evening. Tonight, the growing concern over mad cow disease. Nearly a thousand schools in the northwest are taking all British beef products off their menus. Also tonight, the man who murdered nine-year-old Annette Wade from Lancashire is jailed for life. Bob Greaves catches up with a marathon man who's won this week's Local Hero Award. They're crying out for more as our Carl Hawkins enjoys his week of stardom. And we meet the new television stars from Lancashire who put their own village station on the air. Yes, lots more from them later. But first tonight, the controversy over mad cow disease, or BSE, and the growing concern over eating beef. Councils in Liverpool, Wigan, Derbyshire and North Staffordshire are all removing all British beef products from school meals. The bans are being introduced, although there's no definite proof that the disease can be passed on to humans in the food we eat. And now farmers in the northwest are accusing councils of overreacting. Amanda Metcalf has been following today's developments. Liverpool City Council this afternoon joined the growing list of local authorities to ban beef and beef products from school canteens. The council says it's decided to act because of growing public unease. We think it would be safer when we're dealing with the health of so many children and so many people within this city that we should take this as a precautionary measure. And it is purely that at this point in time. We think it is better to be safe than sorry. The farming industry isn't immune to the growing public concern about the spread of BSC or mad cow disease. Dairy House Farm in Middlewich in Cheshire has been Barbara Smith's home for more than 20 years. She and her husband Don have a 200 strong dairy herd. Mrs Smith chairs the Dairy Committee of the Women's Farming Union and she's led the campaign for the killing of all calves born to infected animals. I don't think the Ministry have acted quite quickly enough in some respects. They should now bring in a progeny policy which will cut out the number of future cases of BSE. What we need is positive, universal action by all farmers. Let's do it and do it now. A spokesman for the Ministry of Agriculture said today that the government wasn't in a position to give advice to farmers about breeding from infected cattle, although the matter was being studied by an expert committee. BSE was first identified in 1984, and since then 13,000 infected cows have been destroyed. There's no proof that the disease can be passed on in what we eat, and many farmers believe there's now unnecessary public alarm and panic. The risk is statistically far greater of you being knocked down in an accident when you're on your way home tonight than there is of you getting BSE from eating beef. All the scientific evidence which is at present available to the government appears to suggest that, very strongly, there is no likelihood of 
human beings being infected with BSE by eating beef. But the women who belong to their own farming union believe some sort of government action is needed, both to reassure consumers and to safeguard livestock. The people who work with animals do so because they really care for them. It is one of the few vocational careers still open to people. So when you care that much about an animal, you care about its well-being and for the future health and vigour of the national herd, if you like, we must eradicate BSE. The murderer of Lancashire schoolgirl Annette Wade was sentenced to life imprisonment today by a judge at Liverpool Crown Court. 31-year-old John Healy, described in court as a drifter, stabbed the 9-year-old to death last July following a brutal sexual assault. Bob Smithers reports. On the 18th of July last year, the burning body of the 9-year-old schoolgirl was found in a ditch not far from her home at Carlton near Blackpool. Annette had been raped and stabbed four times in the chest and neck. A massive nationwide police search began and Annette Wade's parents appealed for help in tracing the killer of a popular and vivacious child. She was a, she was a tomboy, really. She was she, a real she loved tomboy. She, she loved, loved being outside. And fresh air, sort of thing. She had that many friends. She'd go round them all, yeah. playing with them. She'd take it in turns to play with them. Yeah. She was a right friend She'd person, spend ten yeah. minutes with one, then go come and say, well, I'm going to somebody else's now, play with them. Then she'd come back home and tell us, well, I'm going so-and-so now. She always came back to tell us where she was. John Healy was arrested at Dover after returning from a holiday in France. Although the arresting police officers told him nothing of the charge against him as they returned to Lancashire, Healy repeatedly told them he had no alibi. In court, he said he had never met the child. In fact, the self-styled Red Indian, who often wore a feathered headband and lived rough in the fields at Carlton, had secretly arranged to meet Annette at 4pm on the day she died. Annette had told friends that she couldn't play out because she had to meet someone. When he was arrested, Healy was carrying a yellow school recorder bag, which had belonged to his victim. In his summing up, Mr Justice Paul Kennedy said that Annette's killer was a brutal murderer who carried out a horrific crime. The trial lasted three weeks. It took the jury just 45 minutes to find John Healy guilty. Bob Smith is reporting. Liverpool has resurrected the post of Lord Mayor seven years after the position was abolished. The move was announced just hours after the ruling Labour group deposed its leader, Kiva Coombs. He's been replaced by party moderate Harry Rimmer. Rail services from Manchester's Piccadilly station will be disrupted for a third day tomorrow due to an unofficial guard strike. Local services to Cheshire and Derbyshire were affected this morning with hundreds of passengers rerouted on other trains. Around 70% of local and intercity services have already been delayed or cancelled. Talks between unions and management are expected to resume tomorrow. Meanwhile, British Rail at Piccadilly advised people to use alternative transport. And meanwhile, all Mersey bus services in Liverpool are suspended until about half past eight tonight. Drivers are at a mass meeting hearing details of the company's pay offer. Cluid County Council say there's already been interest from a number of businesses over a possible takeover of the Brumbo Steelworks near Wrexham. The factory's parent companies say it has to close because it's not competitive enough. 1,100 jobs will be lost. Mervyn Phillips, the chief executive of Cluid County Council, says there is interest in a takeover, but he cannot reveal from whom. The Manx government is proposing what it calls a modest scheme to compensate investors in the Isle of Man Savings and Investment Bank. It crashed eight years ago with debts of £42 million and 4,000 investors lost their savings. Last month, a criminal trial involving eight former bank officials collapsed. The compensation scheme put to the Manx Parliament today would operate without the government accepting legal responsibility for the crash. Now, ever since the marathon craze began some years ago, it's not been unusual to hear of people regularly running long distances for charity. This week's local hero, though, is an athlete with a difference because, despite being a cancer sufferer himself, Joe Hughes regularly pounds the pavements near his home to raise cash for other victims. This weekend, he's trying to raise £20,000 for a centre near his home at Highton on Merseyside. Bob Greaves caught up with him. <laughs>
Joe runs to keep this place running. It's Lindale, a large detached house near the centre of Heighton. Well, I'm round the back of the garage with my cup of coffee. Joe's here, I think. Let's go and meet him. Will you do me a favour? Will, <laughs> will you take the coffee off me? I've had my cup of coffee illicitly round the corner. And then I'll tell you why we're here. We've had a letter about you from Thelma Smith, who briefly says that you put all your problems aside and help other people mm. who suffer, and you've been doing a lot of running. Yeah. So she's nominated you as a Granada Tonight local hero. So it's my pleasure to give you that. I've got other goodies here in a minute which are to do with the running. Mm. But first of all, tell me why you do it. I just do it because if I like, people say, you know, you shouldn't be doing things while you've got that. And I said, listen, I don't tell you what to do and you don't tell me what to do. If I want to do it, I'll do it. Good for you. So tell me about the running. How, how many times do you run? How much running do you do? Well, I go out two and a half miles a day. But I'm going to get myself, I'm going out this afternoon to do a bit more training so I can get ready for next Saturday. And after I've done this one Saturday, I'll take a lay off and get myself ready for September to do the Mersey Marathon. Joe, to me, epitomises what we are trying to create here at Lindale. Um, it's the quality of life that we're looking for here. You have cancer. Um, none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow, so we all should be getting on with our life and living it today. And that's exactly what Joe does and inspires all of us. Tell me what you think about Joe. I think he's fantastic. He makes me feel, and I mean this sincerely, very, very humble. I mean, he, he has a tumour on the brain. And he's so full of life, so enthusiastic about what he wants to do for us. Well, to go with the run, take your bits out of there, because I think you'll find a, a sweatshirt, a wristband for getting the perspiration off your top. And, and I think we've also got... What size feet have you got? Eight. Well, they'll be about the right size, won't they? And that's your wristband for when you uh, perspire or glow, or whatever the right word for it is. Sweat. Have we, uh, have we taken you by surprise? <laughs> yeah, sweat, quite right. Have we taken you by surprise? Yeah. yeah. Don't say no to Joe. That makes him more determined. Well done, Joe, and good luck at the weekend. Now, if you're one of those people who's always moaning that there's never enough to watch on television, you should have been in the village of Waddington in Lancashire over the past few months. People there have been spoilt for choice since Granada chose it as the site for a unique experiment. 30 different channels were beamed into their homes. And what they made of it all can be seen in a new Channel 4 series starting tonight. One of those new channels, Waddington Village TV, was presented by Deborah Winkley and Jonathan Brown, who's joined us in the studio. But before we talk to them, let's see what competition they were up against. Sitting down to a night's television became fraught with choices. American Cable News, Italy's Ray Uno and French TV5 among the options. And of course there was still Coronation Street back on Granada. The aim of the experiment was to see just how people would react to the sudden increase in variety of programmes. But it wasn't the sport or movie channels that had people glued to their seats, but Waddington's very own community programme. Hello, I'm Deborah Winkley and this is Waddington Village Television. Over the next four weeks we plan to bring you the views and news from the village of Village Life. And I'm Jonathan Brown and along with other reporters in the team, we've been out and about searching for stories about you. Hello everyone, Auntie Annie and I would like to welcome you once again, won't we Auntie yeah, Annie? Yeah, To the kitchen. And where should I start Auntie Annie, do you think? I think you should start here. You'd like me to start yeah. on there? No, I'm not going to agree with you. Great. Well, what sort of programmes did you make? Deborah, what sort of programmes did you get involved in? Well, I went along to uh, the local parish council meeting. Um, we filmed the brownies, the cubs, children did assault. My brother-in-law's local clay pigeon shooting champion, so I went up and made a programme about uh, clay pigeon shooting, mountain rescue teams. Any problems along the way at all? Several prob problems, really. Um, but I think the thing was, we all had a laugh, and everybody after the problems went down to the pub and had a laugh and a joke about it in a few pints. But uh, okay, mistakes. Yeah. But I think it, it was didn't good when we saw you on that. You look great. 
you have any sympathy at all for the people who make television programmes? Definitely, after it's nerve-wracking. It definitely is nerve-wracking. What about you, Jonathan? It's nerve-wracking. It must be nerve-wracking for you people here on programmes like this, but uh, Waddington Village Television, we had nothing like, like auto cues and cameras all over the place. Yeah, we've we got just it really easy. We just basically had a script that we <laughs> handed five minutes before we went on air, and that was it. And where you go. And uh, all the mistakes, oh, we had a, we had an absolute laugh, didn't we? And the programmes went on for a long time as well, didn't they? The what was the was longest programme that you did? Uh, three and, three and, half and a half hours, hours yeah. Yeah, yeah we did a telethon. We were raising funds for local sort of local charities and what have you. And what, what did you think of yourselves when you saw what the results were like? <laughs> I thought we were hilarious. It always, it always uh, when you were up there, felt far worse when you were doing the programme and afterwards when you watched it back you thought, oh, it wasn't that bad, it wasn't that bad really. Well, you got a very good reaction, didn't you? 97% yeah. viewing rates. We are the most popular TV station in the world, in the world actually, not the country, in the world. We're the most popular. Wonderful, you'll have to let us in on the secret. And you also got a fan letter from quite a long way away, didn't yes, you? Yes, Oregon in America. Now and how did um, that come about? Um, I, uh, the letter was just addressed, Deborah Winkley, WVTV, Waddington Village, Lancashire. And he just wrote to tell me I've been seen halfway around the world, yeah, what which happened, was very one, nice. One night we had both um, the Village TV cameras, which were sort of video cameras, anybody can use the video cameras, even the village people could use them. Uh, but we also had ABC from America, yourselves, Granada, we had BBC, we had CNN from America, we had six cameras actually and filming Channel us, 4. and Channel 4 as well. So. Well, you're obviously such experts at all this, that I'm going to sit back now and let you take over. So how about doing the next link, Deborah? Well, thank you very much, Lucy. Now to someone who's such a TV star that he's been honoured by having his very own week of mass celebration and adulation. Yes, it's day two of National Carl Hawkins Week. Now, how's the North West been celebrating? Brilliant. Day two of National Carl Hawkins Week, and I'm off now to the Cheshire part of our region to see how they're celebrating there. Mind you, it's no good having your own week unless everybody knows about it, is it? So I've arranged to have it quietly and gracefully announced here in the city of Chester. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Be it known to the citizens of Chester and its ever on that this week has been regularly and properly declared National Carl Hawkins we, we couldn't be having a jollier time! Nor could they, because they immediately dashed off to the river and they boated and they swam and they sat in the sun and they ate ice creams and I should have liked to have joined them, but I couldn't because I had other fish to fry. Well, here I am in Ness Gardens, which is looking at his absolute best, burgeoning and blooming. Look at this wonderful laburnum here. Isn't that gorgeous? And why am I here? Because I'm going to have a plant named after me. After all, if Betty Up John can have a rose named after her, why can't I? And my advisor here is Dr. Joanna Sharples, beautifully clad in the Carl Hawkins T-shirt as well as she should be. Come and advise me about some plants, Joanna. Welcome to Ness Gardens. Hard to choose, but I turned down the fossil tree and an overblown daisy in favour of this. The Polygonium Bistorta Superbum, Carlus Hawkinius. Perfect. And then I dashed off to Chester Zoo. <laughs> Who's that waving at us, Millicent? Hadn't the faintest idea, dear. Morning, Myra. Hello, Carl. I've got all your records. No, Myra, that was Carl Perkins. See, the diet hasn't worked. <laughs> Here, Arthur, who's the old geezer then? Don't know, lad, never seen him before. Sweet, sensitive creatures they are, and so pleased for me. Here, yeah, Sid, isn't that, uh, what's it? Morning, Jeff. Yes, it's my week, so they're naming a baby reindeer after me. Yeah. Don't be waspish, Geoffrey, it doesn't suit you. <laughs> and lo and behold, Carl Hawkins, uh, baby reindeer, eh? Isn't it lovely? Looks a bit like me, don't you think? Same attractive colouring. Same happy look. No comment, Carl. Now, exactly 150 years ago today, a group of workmen on the River Ribble discovered, quite by chance, the biggest ever hoard of 
No, not Carl Hawkins suits, but Viking silver. That's now on display at Liverpool Museum, and Fred's casting an eye over it before he casts an eye over the weather. This has been described as the finest exhibition of Viking artefacts outside London, and it's at the Liverpool Museum until September. It really is superb. You know, we're all brought up with the idea that Vikings were nasty people, and when you look at their delicate silverware and their carvings, you realise they were quite cultured. Now, here with me is Rickson, who's actually demonstrating how the Vikings worked leather, and is all this authentic? How are you doing it? Oh, it's ever so authentic. And your costume? And the costume is based on finds from the continent, Kragerland and Viborg. Shoes from Haderby, other shoes Wonderful. from Wonderful. Right, well, I better give the weather for Vikings out there. And what have we got for tonight? Well, actually, it is going to clear a bit. Some of those showers are going to die away, so there will be quite a few clear skies tonight. And not terribly cold. We've got a nice, warm, moist wind coming in our direction. For tomorrow, it looks like a bit of a misty start if you're up very, very early, about 6 o'clock or something like that. Then I think it's going to brighten up quite nicely, certainly in the morning. The problem in the afternoon is that clouds are going to develop and they can produce some showers. Also tomorrow, very pleasantly warm once again with this wonderful, moist, humid wind. So to sum up, what have we got for tonight? Well, mainly dry with clear periods, minimum temperature 9 degrees centigrade, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. And for tomorrow, bright morning, showers later, maximum temperature 18 degrees centigrade, that's 64 degrees Fahrenheit. So from the Vikings, I'll hand you back. Thank you, Fred. Two headlines. Wigan, Derbyshire and North Staffordshire have banned British beef from their schools as concern grows over mad cow disease. On a lighter note, veteran election candidate Screaming Lord Satch faces eviction from his campaign headquarters in Bootle. The monster raving loony candidate has been using a pub as his base and opponents say that's against election law. Lucy. Spoil sports and that's it. If Deborah and Jonathan haven't put us out of a job, we'll be back with you tomorrow night at 6.30 though. Until then, we'll leave you with Granada action. Good night. Good night. It's undeniably the best way to feed a baby, so that's the way my baby will be fed. I'd prefer to do it at home in a relaxed atmosphere, but if I'm out, I don't want to be anxiously seeking somewhere suitable or face being banished publicly from some cafe. Mothers have a problem feeding the babies when they're out and about, and they are discriminated against. A few places have special mother and baby rooms where you're welcome to feed your baby, these are good, but I don't think they're the only answer. If cafe and restaurant owners were to allow breastfeeding, they needn't worry about being invaded by armies of women, breasts everywhere, clutching, screaming babies, because it's just not like that. Mothers don't make it into a grand performance, but it can become a drama due to the intolerance of others. Now the weather, a band of showery rain with thunder in places will continue to run up the Irish Sea, bringing more wet weather to Scotland. Further showers will affect western districts with only isolated showers in the east. Temperatures will hold up in the cloudier north and west, but it will become chilly in central and eastern areas. Tomorrow rain will become more intermittent over central and northern Scotland and it will become brighter. Elsewhere, sunshine and showers, most of these in the west. Southern England and Wales will become cloudy later, with mist and drizzle on some hills and co coasts. Quite a warm day again in most areas, but rather cold in north and east Scotland. And the outlook for Thursday, sunshine breaking out just about everywhere. Reedy, where's my shorts, man? The man of the match earns a fortune. <laughs> it's one of the best players in Europe. Eh? Seen better players in a boot, your pitch. The kids on the street want their reward. We can't all earn a thousand pounds a week kicking a football round, you know. I'll tell you how much I get. Twenty-seven pound forty a week. Well, a dead striker's not very good for my cash flow problem, is it? Shooting stars. Film on four Thursday night at nine. A new series begins next tonight, charting the progress of a unique television experiment. For five weeks, the village of Waddington, Lancashire, became the village of the future, bombarded with channels via satellite, cable, microwave, not to mention Waddington Village Television. And while they were watching TV, the authorities were watching them. And over on ITV shortly, it's the bill. Why does one of Britain's rarest birds return to the same secret nest each year? Why is the source of this perfectly balanced natural mineral water only found deep below the Derbyshire Peak District of Buxton? Only nature knows why. Buxton Natural Mineral Water.
I think many, many politicians are quite open and very honest people. However, they come up against many pressures. There are words being whispered in their ears all the time. The good political journalist sifts through the propaganda. He's, he's not held back on The Guardian. We don't have any sacred cows. We're not in anybody's pocket. That frees the reporter to write much more fluently and dig perhaps quite a bit deeper. There's been so many things that held us down. But now it looks like things are finally coming around If you've ever been held down before I know you refuse to be held down anymore, yeah And don't you let nothing, nothing Stand in your way I want you to listen, listen To every word I say Ain't no stopping us Britannia, for every move you make. If you want to red star something, it's worth remembering you only have to worry about picking up the phone. We'll collect it and deliver it door to door. We're all off on a bike ride, there you go. So we're having spaghetti bolognese made with ragu pasta sauce. Do you know? It takes over a pound and a half of tomatoes to make every jar, and it's made to a 50-year-old Italian family recipe. It certainly brings out the Italian in my lot. When you really know cats, you know some prefer one thing, and some prefer another. Because in tests, Whiskers is the most preferred cat food, improving on Whiskers seemed a tall order. But now, there's new best quality ever Whiskers. You'll see that it's more chunky and more succulent. Your cat will tell you it's the most enjoyable Whiskers ever. New best quality ever Whiskers. Our best just got better. If your marketing could do with a lift, get an expert to help you get it right. The Enterprise Initiative. Phone 0800 500 200. Tonight on Checkout, we investigate ethical investments. Can you keep a clean conscience and still make money? Or are we being offered hollow promises? If your child is travelling aboard a school bus tomorrow, they could face danger, even death. What price does the government place on a child's life? A mother's story on Checkout tonight at 8.30 on Channel 4. As the debate on the future of British television goes on, one community in Lancashire was given the chance to voice its opinion in an extraordinary experiment. This is the story of Waddington, the television village. I'm Alan Bailey, the vicar of Waddington in the Ribble Valley. And Waddington is the television village. Lancashire village of Waddington has just been home to a unique television experiment. The village watched television, made television, and in this series has now become television. In springtime, Waddington had a special guest of honour, 
the Home Secretary, the man responsible for broadcasting in Britain. David Waddington not only shares his name with the village, but is also their local MP. Waddington came to Waddington to launch the television village. How much equipment is there? Oh my, this is what I'd like to see. We wouldn't mind knowing how much it's all worth. It yeah. must have cost them a fortune. Yeah, yeah, We've got yeah. um, satellite dishes and this. It's a fascinating and experiment. I mean, I've read a little about it in the local papers, but actually, I don't know very much. That's what I'm dying to see. Yeah. Right, where do we go? The village was set to receive 29 channels, its own TV station, and the latest technology and television systems. Waddington was in a good mood for the ceremonial switch on, and both Waddingtons rose to the occasion. <laughs> but I'm just going to take a chance. Right, the great plan which is arriving. The switch on. They have... Good. Great. Through satellite and cable, 32 families were now tuned into a best guess of the future of television in Britain. With just four channels after 40 years, Waddington and Britain now face the prospect of 40 channels in four years. So while that's on, <laughs> James will come in and right, sit down here. Asking, yeah, it, James will come in, right. sit down here. Camera will be on, Jonathan, he'll right. say that, and then phew, Simon will okay. be off, James will be on. In the children's Sunday school, there was more television. Waddington Village Television. Do we have any specific running time, or can we just let it go on as, as long as we need? Just let it run. <laughs> the community had soon come up with volunteers to try out the new channel. First attempts at programme style, however, relied heavily on the television of the past, rather than looking to the future. Hello, I'm Deborah Winkley, and this is Waddington Village Television. Over the next four weeks, we'll be bringing you the views. Oh shit! Carry on, Let's carry on. <laughs> Over the next four weeks, we plan to bring you the views and news from the village of Village Life. Oh, <laughs> and I'm Jonathan Brown, and along with other reporters in the team, we've been out and about searching for stories about you. We've plenty in store for you tonight. We've got cookery and keep fit, and we've even got an interview with Alan Bailey. <laughs> okay, okay, well, okay, let's imagine that was real. <laughs> the real world of television had arrived in Waddington. The village channel transmitter was under the control of the Independent Broadcasting Authority the IBA. Obviously everything that goes out on the village channel has to um, satisfy the requirements of the Broadcasting Act and indeed the IBA's own guidelines and I brought along a few copies for programme makers to, to have a look at. Um, it's pretty comprehensive um, and I imagine there are some areas in there that hopefully you needn't concern yourselves too much about taste and decency for instance, um, there's certain requirements there, but... We haven't, as far as we know, nothing is untasteful. We're mostly in involved in making the TV programmes, you know, so, yeah. so if we've been involved in the presenting and there's a lot of children involved in everything. I mean, it's you know, the, what can we put on that's indecent? I trust, no. I, I trust you, Lamp. Just in case you've been away, Granada Television have set up an experiment in the village. Uh, briefly... Uh, One of eighty. What are you saying? Carry on, just ignore me, just carry on, Deb. No, no, I won't. I'm just trying to get this in. You spoke earlier about the viewing figures, you know, sort of how will our programme compare against Coronation Street and things like that. 
basically, are we competing against Coronation Street? It's a village TV channel, there's a thousand people watching it. You're competing against 24, 25, 29 other channels for the period of this experiment, one assumes, because there'll yeah. be people who'll take non-stop sport and well, prefer we, that. We have, we have to hope, right. though, that the villagers will give us some favouritism and lessen well, the competitive edge. It's going to be value interest, isn't it? I think it's a, it's, a really good ex, it's a really good exercise for the Granada people to see just how much the local television will influence the people of the community. And how are they going to switch on to it? They may do it for curiosity for a week, and if the content of the programmes are good, they will probably do it for the duration of the, the whole exercise. I think for a month that they'll all be interested. All the, all the mums, the dads, the grandmas, the aunties, they're all going to want to see their relatives on the television. So they're all going to keep... They're all going to watch, <laughs> thinking, is it tonight that Julie will be on? <laughs> it was the Village Channel which invited Mr Waddington as our local MP to come to see the project. And this is where he came first, into the Sunday School Hall and onto the stage where we have our temporary studio. He was interviewed by Katie Harbury, Julie Murphy, Simon the combination of children and MPs was irresistible, it seemed, to programme makers, to politicians and villagers alike. One thing's absolutely certain, we are not putting a bill through Parliament at the present time just to uh, change the structure of television in this country for the sake of it. We're put putting a bill through Parliament because new technical changes have allowed a great uh, increase in the number of channels available and a great increase in uh, choice for the public and we've therefore got to establish a reasonable legal framework to um, uh, accommodate this greatly increased public choice. Well it's all here now, the biggest thing to happen to Waddington since the end of the last war, bigger than the new church bells. It's turned our old village into a space age event. Even as I speak, signals are being bounced back from satellite miles into space into the dishes on top of the tower in the high above car park. Then along cables into our homes. It's a lot neater lot than I clothes, thought it was. Clothes. Not a lot to mess. Lot, this is the lot neater. Press the cable. Oh, and it's still. <laughs> and it isn't working. <laughs> what are you doing now? Plus 20. Oh, it's a lot one. Oh, no, I won't do, please. Oh, we're fighting now. Dear, dear, dear. And is this coming from Spain? Yeah, now we're seeing the news. We're on news at the moment. We do make more mistakes. If my Nana come back into life now, she'd think the spot looks a landing. Yeah, but... What's she want? Nicola, we'll have a dish next year. It'll be a side of the house. Yeah, but we'll, how about you have one? Oh, man. See? Maybe it's something we take for granted now. Remember how good those pitches were from South Africa when Nelson Mandela was released? Well, when he went to prison, we'd not even managed to send good TV pitches across the English Channel. Now, how many channels have you got? And how many rivers and seas have they crossed to get into the living room? But it's not all Space Age and International. New technology means we can operate our own TV channel too. The machinery may be complex in theory, but it's not hard to use in practice. Well, yes, really, so that you've had an opportunity to run through it. Mm. But there will be, I mean, you yes. know, we will yes, obviously okay. be running, okay. doing a complete technical run through. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to keep dragging you yeah. down here from up there. So, uh, I'm anxious to go and get my tea. Right, then now we've got the shop. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you do get anything wrong, um, please try to correct it as, as soon as you can. Um, bear in mind um, people's rights to privacy. It's probably safer to make sure that you know you've you've obtained everyone's consent. Um, as far as what we wouldn't really want to get into the broadcasting complaints commission. Um, area with this kind of thing. Hiya. Thanks for coming. I'm just going to go and do a voiceover now. For two minutes is going to take.
to help the villagers deal with the technical, editorial and even political complexities of running a village channel, lecturers, students and a consultant were drafted in. Right. It was the village station? Yeah. Sounds like a train station. I think one of the important things in this is the fact that whatever we've filmed, the villagers have all got to live here when the television people have gone home. They'll go, they'll finish, bye-bye, yeah. they've had a television programme out of it. We've got to live here. Nobody wants to fall out about anything. We don't want any political items on whatsoever. I'm feeling rather gagged by this concept. Um, for example, you have asked me to produce a thought for the day, mm. hopefully. Well, I might want to say something about the poll tax or budget day. That's fine. Or, and that's a personal thing. But that's it, a personal I, thing. I, that's and I'm not the... going, I certainly don't feel that I want to, to take on all the arguments in, in a minute statement. I might, I might want to say something. Um, so I hope I'm not being gagged. Um, no, I, think, uh, I, think that, I think we'd get it, if we got it right, I think the vicar would, would speak maybe uh, for the community uh, rather than speaking politically. Have they kind of... Um... It's, it's just a rehearsal. Come on. Meet and beware in there. You can sit here? Yeah. Right, when you get a cue, Alan, can you just um, say a few words, please? Alan Bailey, the former vicar of Liverpool Toxteth and a newcomer to the village, was quick to see the potential of community television. And now we've got Alan Bailey here with us in the studio and he's going to give us his thought for the day. Thank you very much. Well, my first thoughts are... I've been thinking of them all day, actually, and they're all about television. Will that do you? The invasion of Waddington had begun months before. Television travels in mysterious ways through space, through air, and in Waddington's case, through water. The village stood back, watched, and then gathered to reflect. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure tonight to, uh, to welcome you all to this unique occasion. From day one back in April, a new adventure began to unfold in this village. And I think we all agree that this venture is history in the making. As you are probably aware by now, the background work has been, been done by the Granada team, and their associates. It's really been mind-boggling. Uh, you've seen them dashing about here, there and everywhere, and probably you wonder what they've been doing, but the culmination of it is where we are tonight and what we're about to do in the next few weeks. These Lancashire people were about to get pictures, not just from satellite and cable, but by a prototype microwave system, which may become cable's local rival. The villagers were going to see their pictures on exotic sets with strange shaped screens. Connoisseurs, there were village pictures in the new viewing experience of high-definition TV. The machinery of television seemed at times to be almost overshadowing Waddington. But in the end, all the technology brought was programmes, and programmes bring regulation. What sort of safeguards do you think are likely to be in place to control the type of material that's going to be available on the channels? Well, at the end of this year, um, the IBA, as you probably know, is, uh, is disbanded um, and replaced by three successor bodies. There'll be Independent Television Commission, uh, a radio authority, and, and, a, and a new uh, privatised engineering company. So the, the ITC, actually, will be responsible for all UK um, broadcast television. Um, what the government actually has got a little dilemma about is how it can handle some of the things that might come in from other European countries. But as far as, as, as UK television is concerned, um, we feel confident that the safeguards will be there. As 
well as 29 channels, the prospect of nightly village television and an ever-present documentary crew, the villagers had yet more to deal with. Concealed cameras in their living rooms, watching them, watching television. Television is for people, and I think that is really what this experiment is about. Will you, having watched all the 25 channels, turn back with relief to Coronation Street and <laughs> say, we don't Certainly really need so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, or, or will you become uh, uh, three-minute zappers, as the Americans say. There are so many channels, and you'll have your zapper, you'll say, and you'll always be wanting to know what's going on on some other channel, so you'll never really watch any program more than about two and a half minutes. Another one, another half of stars. Two notes of the vicar's buying. <laughs> What's that <laughs> offering? The vicar's willing. Okay, everybody. Cheers. Let's hope it goes well. Good luck. Cheers. Cheers. Off recording. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we'll start play. recording and yeah. play record together. Re recording record what? Together. Play it and record together. Was Ab touched that? Never touched it. Deborah Winkley and this is Waddington Village TV. Over the next four weeks we'll be bringing you news and views about village life. And I'm Jonathan Brown and along with other members of the reporting team we've been out and about looking for stories about you. We've lots in store tonight including keep fit, cookery and a thought for the day. Now then, Granada Television have invaded our village and installed 32 satellite channels David Waddington, the Home Secretary, came along to start it all off, and we sent our cameras along too. Okay, 17 minutes on BT. What is this on BT? Marvellous. In the Sunday school, the village channel smelled success. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks a lot. However, they were about to discover that making television was not the same as watching it. Can I ring my mum? Well, he's going off doing cookery so that the cameras aren't on the studio. Yeah, he goes off doing cookery. Uh, so can I can get up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right, does anyone know how long we've got left on video? Yeah, eight minutes. Eight minutes left. If anything happens, I.e. the video goes down, will you shout, it's gone down? <laughs> yeah, and we'll cut to you. Yeah. She's braver than I am. Could you open it? <laughs> yeah, she didn't bother, did she? Reports were coming in, mainly from Debbie's mum, that reception was giving problems. I do apologise about this, but apparently we have a few technical problems at the moment. Dark on his and face, if isn't it? If you are tuned into Channel Five and you have actually a cable TV installed, 
If you turn to cha channel 7 on cable TV, it only if you have a cable TV installed, then I think you'll find the reception is much better. Now then, Granada TV are responsible for all this, and we've been to the command centre, which is behind the higher book, and to their launch party as well, to find out what it's all about. Well, it's all here now. The biggest thing to happen to Waddington since the end of the last war. Bigger than the new In parts of the village, viewing required loyalty and imagination. Watch me drive. Oh, this is a pity, isn't it, this? It's doing this. Oh, good. <laughs> Can't do in the pub, to be honest. I think what we do is all sit down, apologise for the technical things, and say we'll repeat the whole exercise tomorrow night. Our apologies. Right. Well, no, so everyone's sitting. Why can't we go in? I mean, can we? Yeah, we can well, go through the rest of the items. No, pull it out and say good night. Okay. Okay. Yes, your choice. Apologise for all the sort of yeah. Right, okay, stand by five seconds. Three, two, one. We are very sorry, we have received a few technical problems along the line. Perhaps the satellite's not far enough up tonight. But uh, I'd like to introduce my fellow produce, uh, interviewers tonight. That's Michelle Hornby. Good evening. And James Warburton. Hello. As I say, we do apologise about all the technical hitches. I'm sure you'll enjoy the programme throughout the next few weeks. Just give us a chance. We'll do it. We'll be back tomorrow. Bye. Good night. Good night. What a cock-up. Watch. It's not as good as OK, we're clear. <laughs> 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 right, Carl, I got some champagne. Oh, shit! I don't believe okay, that. Look, it's not our problem. Everything going out from here was fine. It yeah. was really good. So well done, everyone. It's great. Yeah, well it's done. Really cool. Thank you. Yay, really disappointed. Oh, we needed a full technical run through, didn't we? Thank you. <laughs> Whether that comes off or not, I don't know. Any decision is the right decision. No one else was making one, so it seemed to be a decision. I mean, there was some hindsight argument that perhaps we could have sat Alan Bailey in and chatted it all the way through. But as I wasn't getting a particularly positive response from anybody about what the problem might be and how it could be addressed, and how it could be solved, then the alternative was to carry on for a further 10 minutes and possibly 20 or 30, and just make it look silly for the people who were presenting it. And that actually, I would think that, uh, as it's not a matter of life or death, it is in a way, but it's not entirely a matter of life or death, I thought it wasn't too bad. I thought, play it against Sam, tonight. I'm Deborah Winkley and this is your village station. For those of you who tuned in last night, you'll have realised that we had quite a few technical problems. And I'm Jonathan Brown and both Debbie and I have our fingers crossed tonight that everything will be alright on the night. And to find out if it will be all right on the night, there'll be another visit to the television village at the same time next Tuesday 8 o'clock.
welcome to Open Air. You've been getting angry already, or rather James Stewart from Scarborough has. He rang in about sports night. As usual, he says, Barry Davis was shouting his head off, telling us what we could see. Then Trevor Brooking was summing up, and lo and behold, when they went back to the studio, there was Jimmy Hill summing up. What is the matter with the BBC? Have they got too much money? They don't need all these people. John Motson's the worst. He shouts all the time. Sorry about that, James. I shall say this very calmly. Um, there's lots of stuff in the papers today, actually, about Jim Davidson. Apparently, the rumours abound that um, his show is going to be dropped on account of how it's offending people because of its racist and sexist gag. So what do you think about that? We don't actually know whether it's true or not, because you can't believe everything you read in the papers these days. So we're going to check it out and let you know. Now, did you see the television village on Channel 4 last night? This morning, we're going to be talking to some villagers from Waddington in Lancashire, whose lives were, as you probably know, turned upside down by the arrival of TV cameras and satellite dishes for the programme and all will be revealed later. But first let's find out what you've been calling in about so far this morning on the first open line of the day. I'm Vernon Scott with six o'clock news covering the uh, funeral of Cardinal of the the leader of the Irish community. Instead of a religious funeral, I saw a political statement. I saw an insult to my nation and to my church. I've just seen the programme Check Out on Channel 4 and I think it's an excellent replacement for the For What It's Worth programme. Although I do feel that the item on used condoms on beaches should not be suitable to be repeated on Saturday mornings. I just watched the BBC Children's Television programme Expo. I'm absolutely amazed at the open racism in that program, the blatant stereotyping of all Africans as savages who needed civilising by white Western culture. To put this program on at this time of the day, I think is unforgivable. OK, those are some of your opinions flooding in so far this morning. Now, last night, Channel 4 showed the first in a six-part series called The Television Village. As part of an experiment, the 1,000 villagers of Waddington in Lancashire could, for five weeks, tune into 30 TV channels, including satellite, cable, and the smallest of all, Waddington TV, a local channel run with the help of the local villagers. Well, we took our cameras there last month to take a look behind the scenes and find out just how things were going in the run-up. for a variety of reasons, not least of which because it has a river running down the middle of the village down which we could lay the cable which then peels off to the 33 homes that are connected to the 29 channel system. It was an ideal place for the UHF transmitter which delivers the local village channel in a kind of pear drop shape over the village. Shows it also because we wanted a community that would react openly and honestly to the television they saw and once we'd chosen it we had to look for a base and the only place that seemed appropriate was this defunct restaurant called Vladimir's. Um, we have taken the odd order for lunch, which is complicated matters, but apart from that, what we did was set up a production base where we could be here more or less all the time, because obviously, for example, most of the people watch television at night, so we've done a lot of night filming, and we needed an operational base where we could take calls from people as well, because we've established a relationship now where they will call us, either with problems or to tell us things that are happening to them. Dealers are expecting a hectic day of trading. Right now we have the greenback up a quarter yen against the Japanese currency at 152.95 yen. The dollar's gained This is the Granada Command Center, and on these 10 monitors here, we have 10 of the satellite channels incoming to this vehicle. And we play them out on 25 channels of cable. And on this monitor here, you can see all 25 channels of cable. By just selecting through them, you can see what we've got. And over there we have a computer that can actually monitor what people are watching all through the day. And in fact, uh, we can actually talk to them via a microphone and ask them questions on the system. 
The village channel has been showing ads to raise money for the local hall and for the village and uh, they've made about three or four so far. They're running out of them. They've been offered some money by this firm here in Clitheroe, so they're here doing this at the moment. Debbie's one of the presenters and she's yeah. looking after it. And the people right, so working the cameras, the students who've been yeah. helping, this afternoon they'll edit it and it'll probably be on the air tonight. Why not let us operate on you at our new premises, Hall Street, Clitheroe? Telephone 26929. <laughs> One of the hard things, I think, in a program like this is to be in the right place at the right time. So we did know about this in advance, and we did arrange to come here. The danger is that when we get here, we might change it too much. I mean, to some extent, we did change it, because we did it here where they, they were going to do it where it was dark, and we brought them into the light. So to that extent, we've, we've altered it. But it's, it's okay, I think. Wake him up. Wake him up. Come on, you're all right. You're all right. The trouble is that by the time you've made a film and you've spent all this time here, in a funny kind of way, you probably do want to get away. Um, but when you've been away a while, I suspect that that's when we'll all miss them. I suspect when we leave, we'll be glad to get back home and do things, but other things. But I suspect after a while, we'll miss Warrington. Well, Louise Mandy, who's editor of The Television Village, is with us in the studio now. Good morning to you, Louise. It was great fun to watch, I must say. What was the um, idea, though, behind it? Well, in, in 40 years you've had four channels and in the next 10 you're going to get this explosion. There's new technology, there's financial pressures, there's uh, political will. And so television as we know it is going to change and we want to find out what public, the public reaction would be and what ordinary people made of it. So we brought it all there, gave it to them and said, what do you think? It must have been an incredibly difficult operation to mount technically. I mean, did you have any real problems? It was a nightmare, an absolute <laughs> nightmare. Um, we. We borrowed and we had made for us from all over Europe prototype technology and when we got it to the village this was the first time it had ever been tried out in homes and of course most of it wouldn't go through the door let alone up the stairs because it's very different having something in a laboratory. Um, but that was part of the fun. Uh, I remember uh, one of the manufacturers actually suggested we took the walls down because we couldn't get it through the door. And we said, no, you'll just have to change your machine. Because those televisions are really enormous, yes, aren't they? Yes, at the moment they are. They're not ready yet. And part of the excitement of Waddington was finding out what people made of it when, when we eventually did get the equipment into their sitting rooms. What did they think? Um, and people came from all over the world to find out. Didn't you have some problems with sheep as well? Oh yes, the sheep tried to sabotage everything. They loved the cables. They ate them systematically. <laughs> Tell me, how did you choose the presenters? I must say, they're, they're, they're really professional. They seem to really take it very seriously as I well. I think they were quite amazing, and they still are. Um, we didn't choose them. They volunteered, and as is the way with all things voluntary, they were the ones who kept coming back and back to plan things, and in the end they did it. But we had people taking part in the village uh, television from all over the village, and nobody who wanted to do something... Uh, didn't have an opportunity and of course the children also had their own show and there were millions of presenters on that now, as well as providing a program at the end which is great fun to watch did you, was there a kind of serious academic side to it did you actually want to find out um, almost in an academic way what sort of trends this might represent for the future in television yes I mean the interest here was to do it over a period of six weeks and watched how people reacted over that period and we monitored it properly um, with the help of the European Institute for the Media and so we now do have a, a long look at how people reacted obviously first of all it's terribly exciting lots of zapping but then people settle down and they start to watch different things and that was interesting is it at all representative though of the general v viewership it's no more and no less representative than taking a small group anywhere I and mean, most decisions are made by a small cabal of people in a committee and here we had a thousand people having a go. You know. Well, it's terrific fun. Let's have a look now at part of last night's programme where the Waddington TV channel had a few teething problems on the night of its launch, as you'll see, just like real television, actually. Now then, Granada TV are responsible for all this, and we've been to the command centre, which is behind the higher book, and to their launch party as well, to find out what it's all about. <laughs> Well, it's all here now. The biggest thing to happen to Waddington since the end of the last war. Bigger than the new In parts of the village, viewing required loyalty and imagination. 
which is on Winter Hill. Just like towards the program. Watch me drive towards the transmitter on Winter Hill. Oh, this is your pity, isn't it, this? It's doing this. Look at that. Just a bit of bounce, yeah. Just a bit of bounce, yeah. Can't do the pulse, to be honest. I think what we do is all sit down, apologise for the technical things, and say we'll repeat the whole exercise tomorrow night. Our apologies. Oh. I mean, it was like normal television, we're complete with technical cock ups as well. Well, Roy Shepherd is in Waddington right now with some of the stars and the locals. Roy. That's right, and talking about technical cock ups, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel, um, Debbie, seeing yourself on telly there on the first night? Was it a bit of a disappointment, a bit of a letdown? Initially, it was a letdown. It was very disappointing because we've, all, we've done all the preparation, we wanted it to go well, and the first night there were technical problems. But night two, three, four, up right till the end, every other night, apart from the first night, was fine, A-OK -okay right. after that. So that's a face that you've seen. Um, Jonathan Brown was uh, also one of the presenters. Jonathan, did you enjoy doing the TV? Absolutely fantastic. It really was incredible, the reaction we had in the village. Every night we went out after the programme, and everyone would come along and tell us what a good job we'd made, or were there any mistakes, and they'd all comment on exactly the things we've been talking about, and they were really pleased. All right, now we've been joined as well by Leo and Trish Murphy, who were viewers. Now, WVTV was an experiment, it was a local TV station. What did you think about the quality of the programming? The quality of the programming was absolutely excellent, and the presenters themselves were absolutely excellent. Unfortunately, I don't think that image came over last night when, uh, when this show was put on the show for Channel 4. Why do you think that was? In what way? Well, I think they, they tended to put on, uh, to coin the phrase that's used in television, the cock-ups. Uh, they didn't really show Jonathan and, and Debbie and the rest of the people in the light that they came over very professional very, very quickly after that first cock-up of the night. It was as if they showed the cock-ups before they show the good programmes. And so that's, the 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 series... that's the reverse of what they usually do on television. <laughs> Trish, the WVTV programme, which was an hour a night, went out between 7 and 8 o'clock at the time when EastEnders was on and uh, when uh, Coronation Street was on. But everybody watched WVTV. Why was that? Because we liked it. I've never, ever not watched Coronation Street or EastEnders before, but I prefer to watch the Village Channel. So weren't you just being supportive of them? Oh, no. No, no, I really enjoyed it. It brought the community together. It told you things and showed you talents that we didn't know people had. And I really enjoyed it. Mm. So you, you were very happy with it. Do you miss WVTV now? We, well, we don't miss it because we have it on video and we're, st we're still watching <laughs> WVTV. Uh, and like Trish said, it knocked everything else, even the 30 channels that were available to us, we just didn't bother with until such that. That was used as supplementary to WVTV. That's, that's in essence what we're saying. All right, well, let's turn now to the presenters. I mean, there's some very good praise there. Your audience figures, what were they like, Jonathan? Um, one night, there were actually 32 um, TVs actually cabled up in the village, and they had a monitoring system in the command centre, and they discovered there were 31... TVs actually tuned in to WVTV and the only one that wasn't tuned in was my own. I was out of course doing the programme. <laughs> Would you like to work in television proper now? I've got to be very careful how I put this because it is real television, it's not cable television. I mean you are transmitting aren't you? Um, yes, I would. I would. I think it's uh, very interesting and if there was an opening I would like to do something. In the do future. you think you've learnt a lot from that first night that we've seen? Definitely. Incredibly, yeah. Uh, we, we really can watch TV now and be critics ourselves. We know all what's right. going on. Great talking to all of you. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. We'll be back later on, back now to the studio. And I predict that those two will be snapped up very soon and will be appearing on so-called proper television. And um, we're going to be talking, and you can talk to the people of Waddington again in part two of Open Air, when we'll be finding out what they think of satellite television. And we're also going to be joined by, amongst others, Nina Miskoff, who's hosting... At 10 to 12. So let's take a look at just what they have on offer. Sky Television, the television revolution. Four channels of entertainment, news, movies, sport. Sky Television, already seen by over four million people. People who have the best entertainment available.
more channels, more choice. That's why we're the one. Hello, welcome to the show. Hello, the moment for which you have been waiting has now arrived. A report out tomorrow will show a record number of complaints against the police. I, no, I don't want to live out there. I certainly don't. Really? No, 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 not, 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 oh, heavens no. I mean, I go north of Hampstead and I get, I get panic attacks. Well, joining us now are Chris Davis from Sky Television. Chris McLaughlin from BSB, and live from her BSB studio, not having a panic attack, I hope, Nina Mishkov. We'll be coming back to Nina in a moment or two, but for the purposes of the next few minutes here in Manchester, we have two Chrises with us. If I can, to avoid confusion, call you Chris Sky and Chris BSB. If we start with Chris Sky, I think many people still don't actually understand the technology of what's on offer. Sky has four channels and one subscription channel, but if you buy your equipment, you can actually pick up 16 services, is that right? Yes, it's a very, very simple proposition. With the Sky Dish, you can receive the four channels on the Sky Television Network, one of which, the movie channel, is a subscription channel. And with your Sky Dish, you also have access to 12 other channels, including the children's channel, an additional sports channel, MTV, the music channel, a lifestyle channel, and eight foreign language services. And this is because Sky shares the, the satellite with some other people, is that? That's right. We, we rent part of the satellite called Astra 1. Mm. Astra 2 is going up at the end of this year, and people who have a Sky dish will have access to a further 16 channels, giving them 32 channels in all. So how much does, does the gear cost, then? If I want a dish and the receiving thing on the top of the set, how much is that going to cost me to rent, say? We offer a unique deal for £23.50 a month you will get... So that's about, that's about six pounds a week then? Just under six pounds a week. All right, let's go to Chris BSB now. Now, what do we get from you? Well, of course, BSB is the United Kingdom satellite broadcaster regulated by the IBA. There are five uh, frequencies available for BSB which uh, offer sport, movies, entertainment, the arts and lifestyle. Those channels uh, are all targeted entirely to a British audience rather than a pan-European reach. So, how, how much do, do you charge them for a rental package? Well, difficult to say rental. We are not in the business of going direct like uh, Sky. We but you work still, through you the can trade. rent. you can rent the equipment. Yes, actually. indeed. Granada, for example, would charge you twelve ninety nine a month for the rental of BSB equipment, including installation, mm -hmm. with a further charge for our movie channel of around £10 a month. So, it, it does look as though it's working out more expensive to get five channels, whereas Sky are offering a lot more choice for, for their amount of money. Well, I think you must compare the... Uh, services available, the quality of the programming, the style of the programming. Uh, we consider that we're a very British broadcaster. Uh, many of our programmers' roots go back to the BBC and to ITV companies. They're building on experience that they've had over many years in the broadcasting environment. All right, let's, let's go to uh, BSB in uh, London. Nina Mishkov, you're obviously convinced that satellite TV has a, a future, as you have joined BSB. What is it that you feel gives it the edge over the terrestrial services? Well, I think the fact that it's not cosy, safe, predictable, the same old boring nonsense that you actually have to put up with. If you actually watch, uh, if you went to, went to Mars and came down ten years later, we'd still be watching Mastermind and That's Life on a Sunday night. Everything's very predictable, cosy and safe. And the ITV channels are looking towards their franchises, so nobody's doing anything exciting there. And um, I think with BSB, we can actually make new programmes and actually concentrate on quality at the same time and have a lot of fun with it. I mean, it is fun after all. I'm sitting here on my little desk that I have for my show with my champagne and my caviar. I mean, I don't think you have that at the BBC. So your, your show isn't going to be cosy and, and safe then. What is it about? My show is called Nina versus the Rest and it's a, a combination of debate and chat in that I pick various topics that I get upset or angry about or care strongly about, like for instance, boxing, which I think is legalised violence and should be banned as a sport, or say snobbery or money. Um, and then a panel of six is picked and I debate uh, against them for 45 minutes with no help from anybody else. We'll come back to you later on in the programme. Chris, Sky, a sizeable proportion, though, of programming is doubled up. I mean, we've got sport and movies on both of the, the systems. Um, it's not a really a question, then, of having more choice. It's just more of the same thing. No, I think there's... It's not certainly not more of the same thing. It is more choice. There are similar kinds of programmes. We show different sporting events to BSB. We show different sporting events to the BBC and the ITV. For example, we've just shown 
the England Test Tour of the West Indies exclusively on Sky Television. We'll be showing the England Tour of Australia exclusively on Sky Television. It's not, it's not the same as BSB at all. Chris Sky and Chris BSB, and Ina Mishkov for the time being, thank you very much. Well, let's now go from the people who are making satellite TV to Roy Shepherd, who's with some of its viewers. The viewers will be seeing a lot more of satellite television. The television experiment here in the picturesque village of Waddington has had some surprising results. Of the 30 channels to choose from, it's been the local TV station that's most uh, popular with high audience figures. So instead of more national or pan-European satellite stations, have the broadcasters got it all wrong? Well, here we are in Waddington. This is Waddington on the map. We're just outside Clitheroe, which in 1966 was voted the best village in Yorkshire and has subsequently been voted the best village in Lancashire four or five times because it's been changed. All the boundaries were changed. So Waddington is pretty used to changes in all its guises. And uh, we've been hearing people from Satellite and uh, Sky and BSB. You're the people who've been watching it. Does what they say actually bear up with the truth? Has there been more choice? You've had 30 channels to choose from. I personally think that um, they're all offering the same sort of um, entertainment. Um, you've just got more sport, more quiz shows, films. Uh, I did enjoy the films, but the problem was that you've probably seen them on video. Because most people have I think video. one thing I'd like to say about the sport, a lot of the sort of sporting events I've seen on sort of satellite TV and the cable TV we've had installed here, uh, a lot of the programmes we've seen are sport that I've never seen on TV before and as regards the sport itself benefiting out of seeing different types of sports on TV that's got to benefit the sport i.e. for sponsorship and for generally us people to watch I like seeing different sports I think the sport's great Leo what do you think about satellite TV you've been watching a lot of it in the last few months we've watched a considerable amount of satellite TV I'm just a little bit amazed at, at Nina Miscori's comments that uh, they're doing something quite new uh, I think we've got equally as much and challenging programmes on ITV, BBC uh, as they're putting out in any of the uh, Sky or BSB or any of the satellite programmes anywhere. We have not seen any improvement in satellite uh, quality or programmes or anything whatsoever. We tended to move away and use satellite TV as a, uh, an escape when we finished looking at the local television. Now, this is something that uh, uh, surprised me, the outcome of this, that the local station has been so popular. Do you think the broadcasters have got it wrong? They're going for pan-European now. Do you think they should be looking to closer yeah, areas I'm rather quite, than wider quite certain. I'm quite certain that BSB and Sky TV should really be looking at what the local TV has done and the amount of interest that's been generated and shown uh, by the people living in Waddington. They have said in a very loud and clear voice that 99% of the time they was watching local television and that's not nothing to do with uh, the fact that it were local people doing it it was because it was in interesting it was good quality and it, it involved the uh, happenings surrounding the local area okay um, very briefly Trish did you find that um, it has changed the whole viewing habits of the family now oh it has yes we turned into a house of zappers we couldn't, you know, there was no relaxation in watching television. The remote control, you mean? Yes, you know, they call you zappers, you're zapping from one station to the other, not watching anything in particular. So you're not necessarily then saying what the people at Sky and BSB really want to hear. I think so, I'd like to say one important thing about the, uh, the local channel. We actually were involved in making the local channel and presenting it. And as regards quality, technically our station was probably one of the worst technic technical quality programmes you've ever seen. But nobody worried about that. They really were, they were not interested in the mistakes, in the broadcast quality or anything. They just thought it was fantastic because of the items we had on. John, what, what do the people in uh, Manchester and London think? Well, I, I think that's very interesting because quality is one of the things that has come up constantly throughout the debate about whether the, the increase in the number of channels that are going to be available is going to improve or decrease the quality. What do you feel about that, Chris? Well, quality is a very hard word to define, John. One man's quality television could be another man's trash television and vice versa. Certainly on Sky in the last 14 months, we have presented some high quality programs, such as the Carmen, the Opera Carmen, live from Earl's Court. We presented the Oscar ceremony live from Los Angeles. This is all quality television. This is all television that people in Waddington will not have seen before unless they had a Sky dish. But as I say, they seem to be saying the quality doesn't actually matter that much. Well, I think they were referring to the quality of their community television. 
which is slightly is, different. Yes. There's a great novelty value of watching your friends and your neighbours appearing on television and having a good time. I admire very much what they've done in Waddington. You can just ask Chris BSB. This is something very important, actually, the local aspect of it. This is one thing that satellite television can't do, whereas terrestrial services can. Mm, I think it's one of the most interesting things of the Waddington experiment is that as people in Waddington were drawn into the television environment, they came, became an enthusiast for their own channel. And it's hardly surprising that they would um, back to the hilt their colleagues and friends that were actually watching and performing in Waddington. Uh, sustainability would be the, the question mark for local television. I'm sure you realize that with a small area to draw stories from, you're limiting the amount of stories you can actually get through. BBC is drawing on an enormous network of news gatherers to give a, a national picture. Something else that seemed to come out from that conversation there in Warrington, Nina Mishkoff, is that there isn't anything new. Yeah, I thought you were saying your programme oh, no, is. No, 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 no. You see, I mean, BSB's only been available for a relatively short space of time, and I'm sure they're talking about Sky. Sky actually <laughs> hasn't made a lot of new programmes. You can't <clears throat> fling in the Oscar ceremony and one opera and say that's new programming. BSB is actually making a lot of different shows, and there is a lot of variety and a lot of choice and but, a lot of fun. But we've seen, we've seen Robin Day on the BBC, and he's on BSB. Well, he's not on the BBC anymore, is he? No, but he's on BSB doing a very similar sort of programme. And, and would you, a very similar sort of programme, would you, would you say that, that Question Time is the better for, for having a different presenter or not? Do you not miss Sir Robin Day? Yes, I suppose I yes, do. Yes, exactly. So now you can get him on BSB. <laughs> do you not miss Selena Scott on uh, BBC? So now you can get him on BSB. And actually, actually that flash of sky going past with Derek Jameson with his mouth open must be the biggest anti-advertisement anyone's ever had for sky. Seriously. Let's, let's go back to, uh, to Warrington and see how they react to what you've been saying. There's people here jumping up here, actually. <laughs> Leo, I mean, hearing them say about the quality of BSB or sky, I mean, how do you feel about it, the quality of television programmes? Well, I'm absolutely flabbergasted that, that they're passing these sort of comments. They obviously weren't listening to what I said on the last occasion. We have viewed, uh, and, and can I make an example? Previous to having the facilities of 30 channels in, in our house, we had very seriously contemplated e either getting Sky or BSB. Since we've had the cable television in, and we've had the opportunity to look at all these programmes, no way will we be dashing out to purchase one of these in the very foreseeable future. I think in the long term, when we've looked and, 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 uh, and found something that's an improvement on it, but up to date, we have not found anything that leaks in any way, shape or form, BBC One, Two, ITV and Channel Four. Well, right, well somebody, you, somebody who actually uh, feels disillusioned as well is Shirley Raybould from Cannock in Staffordshire. Shirley, good morning. Hello, good morning. You've had Sky for quite a while now, I understand. Yes, we have. We've had it for about nine or ten months. And what do you think? Uh, well, we've gradually become more and more disappointed with it. It certainly hasn't lived up to expectations. Um, we originally had satellite because we felt there was too much sport and too many repeats on ordinary TV. And we've got exactly the same with Sky. There's far too much sport being shown on Sky One, which is supposed to be a general entertainment channel. And I don't think that seven hours of test cricket day after day after day is general entertainment. All right, let's, let's put that to Chris then. It's all a matter of taste. We had the, the guy in Waddington who said he was delighted with the sport. He couldn't get enough of our sport. Obviously, some, some programs appeal to some people. They don't appeal to others. That's the whole point about satellite television. You get a very, very wide choice. You will find on one channel something that appeals to you. So ultimately, people are just going to spend the time in front of the telly going, kick, 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 trying to find something that they want to watch. Well, not if they're sensible. They'll plan their viewing a little bit more carefully. When you first get satellite television, it's a great novelty. And there's a great temptation to keep zapping between the channels. After three or four weeks, you start to get the hang of it. The novelty wears off. And you learn to plan your viewing. You suit your viewing to your lifestyle with satellite television. You don't suit your lifestyle to what you're going to view. We've got another call. Good morning, Joanne Ballinghall from Kirkcaldy in Scotland. Good morning. Good morning, John. What's, what's your comment? We actually have Sky as well. <coughs> Excuse me. We got it on a fortnight free trial and decided to keep it because we were most impressed with it. It offers more variety, better quality programmes, and I personally find it most educational. Whereas on looking at the magazines, which are advertising BSB programs, it seems to be concentrating on programs, although they were very, very good in their day 15, 20 years ago, such as Till Death Do Us Part, Steptoe and Son, Bewitched. I find them now a bit dated, and I don't consider them now entertainment. Why have BB BSB gone this way? Chris? Well, I think um, a prime example with Steptoe is the BBC are actually rerunning Steptoe at the moment. Uh, the BBC archive has a great deal of material 
which is very, very popular and regularly pulls in 8 to 10 million viewers on national terrestrial television. Uh, what BSB has done is to invest an enormous sum of money in producing new programs and new drama here in the United Kingdom, trying out new things for the first time. As part of that deal, we were able for the first time to unlock the BBC library and draw on some of the old favourites. We consider that all we're doing is giving more opportunity for more enthusiastic viewing. All right, let's go back out to Waddington. Roy. Right, well, I mean, you've been hearing what's being said. I mean, the pros and cons between Sky and BSB, is there that much difference between the two? Um, I found the BSB Sports Channel to be far more English and British. I, I enjoyed the sport on there. It, there wasn't as much American stuff on. Um, Sky had an awful lot of American sport on. I enjoyed some of it. Some of it I didn't. Obviously, if I didn't enjoy it, I switched it off. But one thing I would like to point out is the fact that at the moment you have regional, regional television. We're in East Lancashire. We have the same regional programme that is broadcast at Carlisle and also all the way down to Warrington and Chester. Really, I'm not interested in what happens in Carlisle if there's been a fire at the local, uh, local TV station or whatever. But if there's been one locally, 10 miles away in the city of Blackburn or something like that, then I'm interested. And I think that's an interesting point to make. Yeah. I mean, Trish, do you find that family viewing has actually changed? I mean, has the, this more choice actually created more problems, feuds it does in, in the family? It does in my case, yes. I mean, Julie likes the music channel. First thing she does when she gets up in the morning is put the music channel on. It's a novelty at the start, maybe later on, if we had one in all the time, then we would have to lay laws down and she wouldn't be allowed to do that the first thing in the morning. But I couldn't relax the same. I couldn't, I couldn't come home from work and think, right, I'm going to watch such and such a programme because we're continually looking for something better, mm. weren't we? Well, you're the ones that have actually seen it. Thank you for the time being. It's uh, Batten to John. Yes, and uh, thank you to our guests in here, Chris Sky and Chris BSB and Nina Mishkov. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Roy. Well, now it's time for our uh, slot, uh, A Day in the Life. Now, we normally talk to celebrities, but uh, today we're not going to do that. We're going to talk to about a satellite television station, not Sky or BSB, but Waddington Village Television, which was a station that was set up uh, as part of the Channel 4 series, The Television Village. Now, for two months, it has been having an enormous success story with 97% of people actually tuning in for its hourly, nightly news programme. My name is Kate Williams. I'm from Lancashire Polytechnic. Together with students from Salford College of Technology, we're helping to produce the Village Channel. Um, so I'm doing a journalism postgrad course, and we're doing the research and production side of it, writing the scripts. And today I'm actually the programme producer and the students from Salford are doing the technical side, they're doing the filming, the sound and the editing and uh, filming the studio as it goes out, doing the, the evening show. The the day of the Lord. As programme producer today, I'm responsible for getting the, all the scripts ready. I'm actually writing part of the scripts at the moment. Um, some of my colleagues from Lancashire Poly are out filming at the moment or going out later filming. We've got people upstairs already editing and when the presenters come in at six, we'll brief them ready for the show, which goes out at seven. So it's quite a busy time. Hello, what's on Waddington TV? Uh, what have you been watching? No, nothing. No, no, not at all? No. <laughs> the main difficulty of doing box pops is that there aren't that many people about in the village, so you have to go and knock on doors, and then when you finally do get one person in every five doors, they say, oh, no, 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 you can't do this. But then again, people are getting used to us now. They're getting more and more at ease with the cameras. And now they wave at you every time they see you and you don't walk past the butchers without waving. If you've got a camera in your hand, you ought to be in there. <laughs> They're really good about it now. And now you've bought me nicely. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you coming in? No, we'll stop here. You'll stop here? Yes. Have you been watching Waddington TV? Of course, I have not appeared on it. The local people and villagers pay an enormous part in the making of the Village Channel. We produce all their ideas. We have villagers pre presenting the evening show as it goes out. Um, they come to us with ideas and we turn them into videos and make part of the show. We can't make anything if we don't get their ideas. So they, for example, we had the local children interviewing the village policemen about skateboarding, ideas like that, which we film for them. 
So far I've been talking to the various groups and they're all discussing what sort of programmes they would put on between 4 o'clock and 10 o'clock. And I found that really they've not moved away from what is already offered to them by BBC and Granada or the independent companies. And that scheduling they don't really appear to get away from. And I'm also finding they want a lot more music, a lot more sort of light entertainment. In terms of our filming it, um, we're having a few sort of technical problems that it's so much light in here and there's background noise and the children are quite quiet when I talk to them. But it seems to be going okay. If you could go through the whole thing. Did you want a copy of that? Um, you want me to go through the whole thing, okay. Yeah, News is what's relevant to the person watching it. And uh, people have tuned in to see what's happening here, what the neighbours are doing, what kind of neighbours they've got. I mean, it's amazing how little people know about each other. Neighbours tends to be somebody in Ramsey Street on the other side of the world who doesn't really exist anyway, for most of us. Here we've been able to bring neighbours closer together through television, simply because we're operating on a small scale. And there's an enormous interest in news that is relevant to you. I mean, the big international stories are relevant, and so are the very local ones. And the very local stories obviously have an appeal because people have tuned in to listen to them. Precious column inches to our TV. This last week, Granada held a press conference to give national publicity to what they're doing to our village. Right, we're just arriving now. Uh, we're some of the presenters on tonight's programme. Uh, it's about an hour before we go on air. It is, yes, and we've got a production meeting any time now, so I think we better dash on and get in there, get Find the script sorted out. Yeah. <laughs> we've got, got the three new ones. ones. The three new Do you ones. want the ins and outs? Yes, yeah. yeah. so If you turn to item six and fill in your ins and outs, it's RMP Hargreaves sign is your in. That's the first one? Yeah, that's the first one. They all run together, right, so yeah. it's just one long piece. Yeah. Well, we really didn't know what to expect when we were asked to help come in and produce it um, because it seemed to be quite a minor part of the experiment with loads of satellite channels being beamed in but it's become an absolutely enormous success. Every villager turns on, well not every, it's got 97 success rate with the ratings. Um, it beats Coronation Street, people sit in and watch it. But most people seem to be videoing them all so that they've got them to keep later on. And I think the reason it's so successful is because everybody knows everybody who's on the channel and it's a really good atmosphere to work in. Everyone's really friendly and enthusiastic. And tonight we've got an unexpected guest, Terry Jones of Monty Python fame. Good Hello. evening, Terry. It's nice to be on a show with goldfish. <laughs> uh, you're also a sexful... Uh, a sexful Sorry. Yes, <laughs> indeed, though. I thought the adult film would start later. <laughs> A successful film director. The odd thing was that initially uh, the villagers were prepared to accept just about anything, to see their children on telly, see the brownies playing, and then very quickly, much more quickly than I expected, in about three or four days, they became highly critical. They realised it was their channel. They wanted uh, specific items on. They said we weren't covering the Methodists well enough, we weren't covering old people well enough, there were too many young people on, we had to do more old people's items and so on. And they became highly critical. Um, and we were able to respond to that very quickly. Uh, the rehearsals start at 8 o'clock and then we start recording after. So the more the merrier as far as we're concerned. Come along and, and have some fun. It'd be great. And before we go, we'd like to congratulate uh, Cathy McLeod, who retired as a secretary from Waddington and West Bradford School after 21 years working there. A long time, yeah. yeah. We all remember. I remember, her, yeah. Yeah, very yeah. well. Very well. I think it's about time we uh, we signed off now. Everybody's had enough of us. Nearly I'll an want, hour tonight. Yeah, they probably want to watch something decent on TV now. <laughs> <laughs> like Coronation Street. Good night, goodbye. Though, I'll say good night to the fish first, good night, please. Good night. But more important, good night, fish. Our children. Yep. Night, night, Bye. Laura. Night. Oh, my God. It went well, I'm really pleased. Ten to five to seven, when Terry Jones hadn't turned up, and I just thought, oh no, please, no, not while open air here, please. And then he sort of casually strolls in at 6.58, you know. I suppose that's working the professionals for you, but <laughs> take a few more years for me. I bet you'll never see another live TV show like that one. <laughs> what a laugh. We may, be the, we may be the smallest TV show in the world, but we're also one of the funniest. Well, thank you all for watching. I think that's just about all from WVTV to, for today. Yes, uh, I hope you've enjoyed another entertaining programme, and I think it's now it's about time we round the ads.
Hang on a second, no, wait no, a minute, back. wait a minute. Taking my job, it's my last <laughs> open air. I mean, it's been great talking to you this morning. What would you say you've learned about television? I can be very critical and watch every move that's being made and say, yes, I know what's going on behind the camera now. And um, what, what about you? It's harder than it looks, definitely, yeah. when you're has, in front of the camera. Has anybody ever said this to you? But you remind me of um, Patty Goldwell. No, <laughs> nobody ever has. All right, well, it's wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Are, are you going to get satellite dishes? Um, my Uncle Stephen has one next door but one, so I think I'll use his. Yes, I'll get it for the sport. I love it. OK, and uh, Leo, if we can bring you in. Um, do you think you'll get a, a satellite dish soon? I don't think in the very foreseeable future we shall be buying a satellite dish, no. I think we've, this experience has taught us to stand back and wait. And if things improve... Uh, dramatically more than what they are at the moment. Let's hope community TV. Let's, yes. hope, let's hope that community the BSB TV. people and the Sky people have taken notice of the two presenters that we have on today <laughs> and maybe that'll Three. enhance it. Three. <laughs> That's it. Thank Three you very much indeed. Back now to the studio. <laughs> I'm Eric Evanson, the local garage proprietor <coughs> and chairman of Waddington Parish Council. And Waddington is the television village. Lancashire village of Waddington, all is not as it seems. This small community is taking part in a unique experiment, testing the television revolution now facing Britain. The multi-channel future has arrived. Then auch ich will doch nichts weiter tun als das, was Sie tun will. Wednesday night on Trans World Sports. Which has been their demand now for three and a half years. But we don't hear any... Moving with the times in the ever-changing face... And take a trip down the fast-moving world of High Street. I think it's brilliant because we never used to have such a wide range of different programmes we can watch. And we've got like a sports channel, children's channel, discovery channel and all those. I think it's brilliant. Well, I don't get the same relaxation that I did from watching like, like I like to watch my soaps. Now I find that I'm more interested in what there might be something better on another channel and I find that I flick about looking for something better all the time and I don't sit and relax like I used to do. Oh, I mean, it's going to cause a lot of controversy, especially in the, with the family in the house. I'm all right. I can pick what I want. Overnight, the future of British television became the present. 29 channels, most broadcast by satellite, were then cheap permitting, delivered to homes by cable. On offer, a new and bewildering choice of programmes. All available at the touch of a button. Sky 24 hour news. On the hour, every hour. Movie channels. All day sport. On Wednesdays and Saturdays, we've World Championship Boxing. Shopping. And we're looking at toasters here today on the shopping channel. We've moved away from the jewellery box. Music and pop. Channels for children. And channels strictly for adults. After 8 o'clock, the home video channel. And of course, Waddington's own village television. Good evening. I'm Deborah Winkley, and this is your village station. It was a far cry from the days when television first arrived in the village back in the 1950s. If you went in a pub, maybe in Clitheroe or anything like that, you'd, you'd see one stuck up on a wall. And in them days, you know, they were only uh, a bush nine inch or something like that. And to see a good picture in them days, you used to put a magnifying 
thing over in front of them. Do you remember? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I mean, you, it was just like looking down the funnel, really, weren't it, you know? Yeah. And uh, anyway, um, in 19... It, they developed from there, and my granddad got the fir first television, one of the first, as, as I can remember, and it was a Ferguson, wasn't it? Mm. And uh, we watched the Queen's coronation on it, we watched the uh, 1953 Cup final on it. Reception wasn't good, but it was amazing. I mean, it, it, it breathed new life into the village, really, with, with the television coming. It took 40 years for four channels to reach Waddington and the rest of Britain. Now, new technology, commercial interests and political will are combining to bring a possible 40 channels in the next four years. How would the people living in the television village react to the television of the future? What would be its impact on their viewing habits and on their lives? Are you seeing? She's got a... what has she got there? Got one? What they were watching was monitored day and night by computer. How they watched was recorded by concealed cameras. In the beginning, it was a case of trial and much error. What's that on the telly? What's that program? Open champion. Still? At first, channel hopping almost replaced viewing, especially in families with children. One family clocked up a best score of 394 in 24 hours. But on average, in the first two weeks, they changed channels 64 times a day. Score a hometown victory. Stay with us. We'll be back after this short break. It's a bit mind-boggling at first. There's that many channels to choose from. You end up skipping through a few and not actually watching a full program. You know, you sort of get you tend to get a little bit bored yeah. because there's that many channels. You start watching a film and if you don't sort of really get into it, you just flip over and just start to watch something else. And you sort of catch off the beginning of another film, so you just start watching that. And you, you, you tend to uh, flip through programmes more. You don't, when you've only got your three channels, you tend to stick to one and watch it more. There's like so many channels and so much choice that you tend to be flipping through the channels a lot more and looking to see what's on. Friday the 23rd, after the Village TV, we zapped around available channels and could find nothing of great interest. To sum up, at the end of the first week's spasmodic viewing, we have seen a couple of or so excellent programmes, but on the whole much prefer our usual one, two, three and four channels. However, till now, we have seen no excessive violence or pornography. Have you done radio or TV before? Yes, a bit. Yeah. Local, local. Local, local yeah. yeah. You haven't done this sort of thing. No, no. In the Sunday school, now Waddington Village Television Studio, an early visitor to the experiment. Bruce Fireman, a banker with a special interest in the financing of television, believes the future belongs to cable TV. I think this is rather nice. I, mean, I like the flowers there. And all that. I suppose that's their mascot, is it? There? Yes. His next stop, Church Close, and the home of Leo and Patricia Murphy. So I'm interested in what's happened to you in moving from 29 channels now. <clears throat> and, the, and the most interesting thing to me, actually, to start with, is what you don't like about it and what you found, what, what the effect of all these extra channels has been on you as individuals and as members of families. Well, since we've had the cable system in, I've found that I haven't watched my soaps and there's nobody more likes the soaps than me, is there, Leo? That's right, that's right. Um, for the last <coughs> fortnight, I haven't watched any of them. Only maybe bits and pieces. You haven't watched them at all? No. What have you been watching? Well, I've been too busy watching Leo zapping about. <laughs> <laughs> there, you know. Oh, you mean he just, won't let you watch his soaps? Yeah, just, uh, just let's look here, Trish. Just let's look there, you know. And I don't...
my wife, though she condemns me for zapping through these programmes, zapped one up that happened to be, we have got today some excellent buyers for you with 10% off. <laughs> we have at this moment in time a 42 piece or 49 piece or something uh, dinner service which you can have for X pounds. I found and a shopping channel. Yeah, Jenny did. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I arrived home and she was elated. Oh, great, I don't even have to move out of the house now. I can sit here and there's a whole host of things. <laughs> now my mind boggled. And I said, well, how do you pay for these things? It was the Barclay card. Oh. So at the end of the month, I receive Barclay card bill, <laughs> X pounds. ...of the shopping channel. So quote the code number PBB5. It's 26 99 in the UK and 36 49 for our viewers in Ireland. She was absolutely <laughs> delighted to see this programme was available. Oh, it caused ruptions. Now then, we can joke about it. But it can become a very, very serious thing, I think, in some families. That this is now available, uh, which has never been available before. There's enough out there in that big wide world mm. that's drawing and trying to pull us money. The Barclay cards, the banks, everybody's making it terribly easy now. And now we've got another channel that moves in and says, we can now help you to spend more money. Why, why actually are they digging up holes in the back streets of Blackburn to put this cable in? Why are they starting at the lower end of the market? The heaviest television viewers are the people who are likely to subscribe to cable. And the heaviest television viewers live in what you call the back streets. And they're the people who watch television or have the television set on for something like seven hours a day. Now, the average TV set in this country is on for five hours a day. And these people are often have it on for seven hours a day. The very heavy television viewers have it on for seven or more hours a day. They're the people who will subscribe <coughs> to cable because they want more choice. Before the actual satellite systems took off, I was very interested in having a satellite system. Yeah. And now that I've been given the opportunity by Granada to take part in this experiment, yeah. and we have these 25 channels, fair enough, we have a, a vast quantity of choice. Mm -hmm. But the quality in that choice leaves a, an awful lot to be desired. Sunday, 25th of March, some general observations on the first week of cable TV. This first week of being able to have so many channels to choose from, has been rather a mixed one with the making of decisions as to what channel to turn to and after much scratching I am finding that the news and sports channels give me great enjoyment but I only arrived at this situation by dint of trying all the stations including the Delta channel at various times of the evening and early morning back at the Sunday school even the village channel had multiplied Hey, you get ready, get on your feet, get into gear and hit the streets. It's you they want to see when you get down to WC. Welcome, Welcome to Wellington Children's Television. On today's programme, we've got... Magic. Music. Mm. A silly soap opera. Football. Music from the violin to the piano. Well, we've got no piano. OK, we'll do that next week. By the way, this is Julie. This is Katie. This is Claire. And that's Daryl. And a week of lot in store for you today. Wow. wow. I like Sky Movies and the uh, MTV channel because you can see the videos and the singing. And I like Sky Movies because there's a good range of programmes on that you don't usually see on your normal telly and you don't have to trail down to the video shop to see, spend all your money. <laughs> on Sky Movies, you're in good company. On the music channel, you can see all the videos and watching the people actually sing. Go and check your local record store because they have a new single out today. Some of the new ones are quite good from America because they're quite interesting to know what's going on over in America. International journalists reporting their country's views on CNN World Report, tracking the heartbeat of the world, weeknights on CNN International. My son is six uh, and you could say to him, up, down, get your breakfast, no problem. And now we get him out of bed. Sometimes he's downstairs yeah. uh, <laughs> in his, in his pyjamas. Mm -hmm. and he's, he can fly around the cable, the video channels, everything. Um, no problem at all, he's a six-year-old. He can operate the, the whole system yeah. you know, completely. And, and he's, he, he goes on to the children's channel. If it's not open early in the morning, he'll flick around the various channels until he finds a cartoon. We have the same problem in the morning. Uh, at one time, I used to have to fight and shout and scream to get him downstairs. And now he's down there, not always dressed, sometimes dressed, never washed. 
watching the television and he is actually flicking around trying to see what's what um, in fact the first time he went down we caught him I think uh, we hadn't had it in a couple of days and it was 20 past 2 in the morning and I heard this noise downstairs and it was Tim flicking through the channels which is not very good on Clitheroe Road former headmaster Leslie Robarts and his wife Marjorie also you had know, problems so television's taking over yeah, people Homework is done in about ten minutes, you know. Uh -huh. yes. If it's uh, that at all. Isn't well, it? early in the morning, my, Michael does his homework in order to go out for television. That's the most amazing effect of television I've ever seen. You've seen the effect on the boys. They come in, they rush in, and switch the television on. Now they've got access to the new television. They love it. They love the multiplicity of choices. We're horrified, I would suggest, mm. uh, as parents, because we can't control it mm. unless, unless we're aggressive and, yes, and, and firm. It's, it's, a, it's a battle between us and the set, really, isn't it? So who's bringing up the children, the television presenters or us? us? Mm. Well, who has the greatest influence? Well, I, I, I know who has the, greater, the <laughs> greater influence of the two. <laughs> that is the television. Mm. It's changed you, hasn't it? It has, yes. Uh, and I'm getting more and more against it. I don't dislike television but I'm more against the influence it's got over us as a family. It's dividing us much more as a family. Not that it's going to divide the family, but it's, it's making us debate more and have decided points of view than it ever had before, because I'm having to be very firm with the children. Well, I don't want them to watch what I don't want them to watch. That's... So you find it more threatening, then? Yes, I do. Threatening is to the family. Hmm. Yes. So when you ban us more, it's your point of view, not ours. It is, but I have to exercise the choice for you. I still feel that you're too young to exercise a moral choice. You mean watch Donald Duck? Yeah. Well, if you want to watch Donald Duck, that's fine. I'll let you watch Donald Duck and the Jetsons and whatever, or whatever and um, Tom and Jerry. But no, when it comes to moral issues, and that is what parents are for, we have to exercise a moral choice for you. And I'm having to exercise it more with this black television box here than I've ever had to. Whatever we've done has been so natural before, but it's not any longer. Now, would you like a cup of coffee or would you... For a glass of wine. At the home of Colonel and Mrs. Jeffrey, another visitor. When the villagers weren't watching television, they were talking about it. In this case, to a leading American academic. What evidence one can get about the way in which different age groups react to the diffusion of more channels does suggest that younger people are more ready to sample uh, more widely across the channels uh, than older people. And it's as if they are, uh, if you'd like to put it that way, a lot of Trojan horses for the, uh, uh, for the new system. Maybe the, the next generation will view it in the same way uh, as the Americans do now, that uh, television is there mainly for um, entertainment. Mm. There's and I think children now see, I mean, I had my grandchildren staying with me, I thought it was marvellous, mm. all these channels zipping about or zapping about or whatever they say. Um, and, they, and they enjoyed it. But of course, I mean, they're, they're small, they're not discriminating at all. I feel television is a very important medium and it reaches into every home and it has a tremendous impact on the life of every person in this country. And I feel it's too important to be run by businessmen whose criteria for running it is that they're capable of making a lot of money or they have made a lot of money. I, I was going